Hi everyone, on to week two of administrative law. Um, this week our aim is to get an overview of all the different systems and interlocking parts that form part of the administrative law system. And this is something that once you get your head around it, it's fine, but it's something that is a bit different from other areas of law, because other areas of law generally, there's one forum, there's you know the, the, the criminal courts or the family law courts or whatever. In administrative law, what we have is a, um, a series of different systems that all work together and are stronger together than they may be in um, isolation. So the main exercise for the workshop this week is to develop a mind map and to use that mind map to try and, for yourself, put these things together. And the actual process of doing a mind map is extremely useful because it, in, 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 in learning terms, it uses different parts of your brain. It uses a graphic and visual part of your brain and it uses that to um, record information, to actually put that information together. So um, if you've not done used mind maps before, they're actually a very useful thing for learning and they're a useful way of learning things um, in a way that sticks, that just reading things on the page may not do. So there's some guidance in the book in terms of, um, um, in, in the um, workshop exercises, in terms of systems you might want to use, but you can just draw it on a piece of paper. If it comes down to that, draw it on a piece of paper and scan it. Um, but there are some online systems that are quite useful that will help you out with that. So. Um, let's start with the readings for this week. Uh, the readings, chapters two and three of the textbook. Chapter two talks about the themes and values of administrative law. And this is very, very important because if we see administrative law as just a system of rules without any context, without any sort of political environment, we'll quickly find that um, it's, it's hard to find reasons for why the law is the way it is. With criminal law, we can reasonably easily revert to our, our basic values as to why we think the law is and evaluate how the law works. So, you know, we generally think that murder is bad, assault is bad, stealing is bad. And we can look at the different rules and different laws and we can evaluate them on that basis. Admin law is a little bit different because the values are all around open government, transparent government and democracy. And we're basically familiar with the ideas of democracy, but we all have slightly different ideas. And if we haven't studied the theory of open government, the theory of democracy in any kind of depth, um, we might end up with values or views that are a little different to the ones that underpin the law. And if we spend too much time listening to the media, we'll definitely end up with different um, approaches because the media has a very strange idea of what democracy is sometimes and politicians definitely have a strange idea of what democracy is. So democracy is really about building systems of accountability and systems of balance around power. And there is this dominant discourse that we hear all the time that you vote people in for power into power and they therefore can do whatever they want and that is not the foundation of democracy. Democracy is about controlled power, exercise of power. It's about checks and balances. So when people say, well, you know, you vote for them, they can do whatever they like, they're not actually representative of the way the system is supposed to work. So we do stray into a little bit of politics and a little bit of legal theory in this subject because we have to, because we can't just assume that, um, uh, you know, everyone assumes that murder is wrong like we do in criminal law. We actually have to understand where these systems are coming from. So the chapters two and three of the textbook go a little bit of the way to exploring some of those ideas. We're going to come back to those. And in particular, chapter three looks at the public-private divide. And that is something which we used to have a very clear idea of in society, of what was public, what was private. And there were problems with that, of course, um, most of which being we tended to gender those spaces and the private space was seen as gendered, public space was seen as masculine. Um, and the... Uh, problem with that but was things like domestic violence was seen as something that happened in private space and wasn't part of public accountability, whereas a, an assault on the street was seen as something that was in public space and therefore. So a lot of the early trouble we had with policing things like domestic violence came from this very rigorous idea of public and private that we had. 
So that's criminal law. What does this mean for administrative law? Well, it means that um, once we had a reasonably strong idea of what the state is and what the state did and what the state was responsible for, and the state was responsible for things like criminal justice and education, um, public transport, um, public utilities, but we've seen a lot of those things eroded. We've seen privatisation across the sector. And that has raised very interesting questions for administrative law because once you privatise something, does it still have a public character? What is the character of a private prison? Should a private prison be publicly accountable? I mean, instinctively, we know that it should be. But once you privatise something, you've changed the character of it in some way. And you need to think about that in the way in which things are accountable. And one of the themes that we will look at across this course is this increasing push towards privatisation. Um, if you want the label to put on it, it's neoliberalism. And one of the aspects of neoliberalism is the move away from public accountability for things that happen. Um, this is, it's very interesting that all the, th the subjects I've taught over about 20 years of teaching, admin law has changed the most and that's because it's the area of society that's changed the most. And it's very interesting and dynamic in that way. Uh, when you first look at this admin law, it sounds like it's a very boring subject. But when you think about it, and this is why we talked about habeas corpus in the first week, when we look at the changes that are happening, it's, it's a very, very interesting topic. And it's somewhere where lawyers are right in the middle of some major transformations. Anyway, so have a look at the materials in the readings, have a look at material in the book. Um, we'll talk about this more in the workshops. The most important thing, I think, is to start to get that distinction between merits review and judicial review, where merits review is something that occurs within an administrative system and happens, as the title says, on the merits. It happens, um, a decision can be revisited and, and the new decision maker can say, oh, well, we'll, we'll, we'll change that decision. And that happens whenever you really have uh, a decision that goes to a higher level. You know. You make a decision, but your manager can, can, can hear a, a case to overturn that decision. It's part of the administrative bureaucratic system. Judicial review comes from outside, and that's where the judiciary has oversight of administrative systems in, term, in, in terms of the legality of decision making. And the judges can come in and say, well, we can't actually review your decision on the merits and say, you made that decision wrongly, but we can say you made that decision illegally because there are legal constraints on the way in which you make the decision and you have not followed those things. Now, the details of what that means, we're going to explore in a lot more depth and next week we will look at a lot more of, we will do an overview of, of those different principles. But this week it's just, I guess, very important to see that merits review and judicial review are different. They're parts of different forms of government. Even though they kind of look like the same thing to the layperson, they look like they're going to a forum and they're making a case and they're arguing a case. Um, but we need to keep those things very distinct in our minds. I will do uh, a, an additional document and an additional video on key on, on a recap of constitutional law. Um, I know some of you haven't done, are doing constitutional law at the moment, and the rest of you probably have forgotten most of what you studied in constitutional law because that's what we do when we finish a semester. And I'll put in some of the key things to either remember or to seek out from constitutional law that are important for this subject as well, so that we're all on the same page. But the idea of separation of powers, the difference between the judiciary and the executive is one of those important things that we'll come back to. Um, now there are other areas that we need to tie into administrative law apart from the two big tribunal um, systems, the, the tribunals and the courts. Um, one is the area of civil and political rights and that supports a whole lot of other different areas of, um, uh, of, of, of law. There's also the different oversight mechanisms, so commissions of inquiry, ombudsman and administrative bodies that oversee other administrative bodies to try and make sure that things are done fairly. It's the who watches the watchman um, scenario. And then we'll look at, uh, also look at whistleblowers protection, which has some limited protection in Australia, but has more and more pertinence as time goes on, particularly with Edward Snowden and WikiLeaks and issues like that. Um, to what extent should people be able to blow the whistle on governments? And when they do that, should they be able to be protected for what they do? So anyway, there's a quite a few things to cover there. And this week, uh, the important thing is, is, is to try and get that initial map done 
so you can see the pieces and we can fill in the detail as we go on later but to actually see that these things connect to each other and they support each other so i'll see you in the tutorial